All right, the July 2025 product update for Fusion just dropped. Quite a few things here to be excited about that I'm looking to try out. But one thing that I just could not wait and wanted to hop on and do a quick video to just test it out real quick is the mesh texture extrude feature. Now, this is something I know many of you are going to be excited about because you've been asking for it. As have I, I've been waiting for something like this to be updated in Fusion for quite a while now. And what this allows you to do is bring in an image and apply a texture of that image right into your part so you can get these textured look within your model so an example here they're showing this hex pattern you know and apply it to this uh, portion here of this mouse and for stuff like this like hex patterns there's sort of you know there's a way you can go about it but this just makes it so much simpler all right, let's just jump right in and kick the tires a bit. So I just updated Fusion this morning and I've been playing around with this. Um, so I have still plenty to explore, but I think I feel like I know enough to just give a basic overview right now. So one thing to know is that this works only on meshes. So that means STL files, 3MF files, basically anything that has sort of that triangulated mesh, something you would download from like Thingiverse or printables or make a world, you know, and, and bring it into your slicer. You have to start with that. It doesn't work directly on your solid models. So I can either go download something and bring it in, or I can design something in Fusion and convert it to a mesh. So let's go that route. And we'll start with something just very basic. So here I'm gonna create a sketch here and just uh, make a circle, say 100 millimeters. And let's take this and let's extrude it 10 millimeters. All right, so we have this cylinder and what we're gonna do is now move from our solid workspace here to our mesh workspace here by clicking on that tab. We've got a whole new um, set of tools here, but if you go under the create menu, you'll see you have this option to tessellate. And tessellate is sort of the opposite of taking a mesh and converting it to a solid, usually like a B-Rep. This takes a solid and converts it to a mesh. So we're gonna click on it. We're gonna choose our model here and we're simply gonna click okay. Now I'm gonna leave the default settings here just to kind of show you something because I struggled with this for a bit and it's just gonna be a little more clearer if I show it. Okay, so when we convert it, we notice that we get different colors on the different faces. Fusion basically organizes it into face groups. So we have a top, the side, and the bottom. So that's important to know. All right, next we're gonna go to our modify menu and we're gonna go to direct edit. You click direct edit, you're gonna select your body and then you're gonna click okay here on the dialog box. You're gonna get this new dialog box that's gonna say mesh selection palette and it'll say finish direct editing. So that's how you know you're in direct edit mode. And once you're in direct edit mode, you'll have a new tool here that'll pop up that'll say texture extrude. We're gonna select on it. We're gonna get this dialog box. It's gonna say make your selection. Now, another thing that's important to note here is you've got a selection type and the options you have there are window, freeform, paint, and then you have selection filter and your options are faces, face group, and body. You can play around with these. I'll save you the longer explanation and, uh, and the sort of pains I went through, but the best option you're gonna want here, um, actually don't even worry about this top part, change your selection filter to face group and then just go ahead and select the top portion or the side or the bottom or whatever. It's gonna give you a clean selection of that versus trying to do a paint selection or a window selection, which normally will run into the sides and it's hard to get a cleaner selection. So really what I would choose is whether you want the whole body selected or a certain face. And if you go with face, go with face group as your selection. All right, so I'm just gonna apply this texture to the top. I'm gonna to click on image. And then here I downloaded a few images, just went on Google and took screenshots of some geometric patterns. So we'll try some of these and see how they work out. So first one, um, I'm just gonna choose this sort of simple radial pattern here, click open. It's gonna bring it in and I'm simply gonna take this and scale it up to cover my entire face of my model here. Now, as far as your options here, um, you've got opacity. Honestly, I haven't played around with it too much. Um, it just, just changes the opacity of your image and it's, it's supposed to affect, I guess, how deep it extrudes. So, um, you know, you may want to experiment with that. Extrusion type is symmetric. Basically, it's looking at your black and white. It's going to extrude the distance one, one way, the other one, the other way. And here I have it set to one millimeter. So if I do a symmetric extrusion, it'll extrude the black, you know, um, I'm not sure if it's which one's up and which one's down. Um, 
but you can play around and see. Now you have the option of going asymmetric and here you can choose different options for the black and the white parts and positive is gonna do a positive extrude, negative is gonna do negative. It's gonna keep it simple, let's go with symmetric here. Um, flip just flips the direction. Blend distance, if you just hover over this, it gives you an explanation. You know, this sends the blend to the boundary selection, so I guess you don't have an abrupt cutoff, it'll blend it in. Um, offset is if you wanted to keep it an offset um, from the border. We're just gonna leave those as default zero for now. Um, you can preview and you have image trans transformation here. Let's just go with what we have here, one millimeter extrude distance symmetric. I'm gonna click okay. All right, <laughs> and then uh, pretty much, you know, wasn't the result I was looking for. You can see here, I'm not getting much movement here. Um, it looks like, let me just finish direct editing here so we can see, kind of extruded it in one way. You know, I don't see any uh, object manipulation um, going across this way. Let's just go to a top view. Let me turn it this way. So in this case, let's say going across, but up and down, there's really no image manipulation there. And this all has to do with resolution. Resolution is really important when you convert that mesh. Uh, and I wanted to highlight this because this kind of had me stuck for a while as to you know why it wasn't working. So I'm gonna undo and I'll show you how to fix this. So let's go back to before we tessellated it and then I'm gonna go to create, tessellate again. And here, the part that I found was really important from all these little sliders is this one called max edge length. So we're gonna choose our model. Um, for some reason it sets to 141. Let's click preview and you see we have these faces. So these triangles are just going the whole length across that model. So that's why it's not leaving any resolution going you know, in the um, up and down direction. And we can see as we start to change this, let me go down to 100, not much difference. I'll go down to 50. I'm like starting to get a little change to the those triangles. Let's go down to 10. Now we see that they're sort of being, you know, delineated in an X and Y form. So we've got them sort of separated into these squares and then further se separated into these smaller triangles. So this is where we start to see an increase in resolution. Go to five, a little more. We can go down to one millimeter and you can see now much more resolution. You can even go down like sub one like 0.5 and 0.1 um, just remember the higher resolution you set here the more time fusion is going to take for making these calculations so for this demo i'm just going to bring it down to one millimeter uh, resolution there click ok and now let's try that same thing again we're going to go to modify direct edit choose our body click ok back to modify and now we will see we have texture extrude Option, selection, we're gonna make sure we change this to face group, select that top face group, our image, we'll go ahead and grab that same image here, um, insert from my computer, let me grab it, click open, and we'll go to a top view here, and I'm just gonna scale this up to get it to cover my entire body here. Everything else, I'm gonna leave the same here, I'm gonna click okay, and now you see the difference there that that went ahead and it was applied uh, and you see you have the you know the object manipulation you know that represents what that image showed so if we want to go finish direct edit utilities make 3d print select our object we'll go ahead and select our bamboo slicer there click ok and here it brought it into our slicer and we can go here slice this and 3d print it and there we have it really quick way to Put a texture on your object. Let's try a few um, different options here as far as the other textures I downloaded. And these are all PNG files that I just took screenshots of. Um, I'm thinking JPEGs would work the same way. All right, let's go ahead and grab another one. Modify down to texture extrude. It keeps defaulting back to faces as the selection. A little bit annoying. You have to come in and change it each time so it doesn't remember your last selection. So face group, select our face and then choose our image let's grab insert from my computer uh, let's try this one over here click open and i'm going to do the same thing scale this up now you do have the option here there's a, there's an option here called pattern where if you um actually it's called repeat and the way i think this would work is if you had just like one square 
or two or three, then you can actually repeat it to, um, it'll basically pattern it. Um, but in this case, I'm just gonna have it um, so that I scale up and have it encompass the entire model here. Um, so I don't have no need for that repeat. Um, let's try a different extrusion height, let's say two millimeters. And then you can see how that looks, pretty cool. If you're going for just like a texture feel, that's probably a little bit much. You may even just need to like do half a millimeter. All right, let's do a couple more. I'm gonna undo. Let's go to texture extrude, change it from faces to face group, select our face image. Let me see. I have insert from my computer. Let's try this one here. And then I'm gonna scale this up. So what you want is you wanna grab something that's you know black and white or grayscale um, for it to work the best here. I'm gonna change this extrude distance back to one millimeter. Click OK. That looks pretty cool too, right there. All right, one more, one that I'm excited about is, let me undo, it's it's this brick texture here. So let's go to texture extrude, again, change it to face group, select the face group image, insert from my computer. And I found this sort of like drawn brick work here. It's got this really sort of organic, um, you know, like weathered stone. And so here I wanna show a couple different things here. I'm gonna just kind of do this regular way just to kind of fit the model here. Um, keep everything else the same, click OK. And you'll notice though, like it doesn't really look right in this case. And it basically again comes down to resolution, you know, the size of the bricks and the size of the little facets here of the triangles um, doesn't really allow it to get the detail I need for the bricks. So in this case here, what I'm gonna do is let's go ahead and bring it in again. Um, gonna go ahead and change the face group, select it, grab it from my computer. Um, but let's, this time we're gonna scale it up quite a bit so that we only have, you know, like a few bricks showing over the part here. Um, so let's do like something like this maybe. Uh, go a little higher and then you can even like move it like if, so you can get the selection you want. Um, and this is one maybe that you would wanna do like maybe do a couple and then pattern it. So let's just do something like this. Click okay. And then now you can see, you know, you've got that detail of that brick pattern here. So this is something I'm excited about. I don't know if you remember, like a few years ago, I did the, a model of like this stone cottage and just, it, you know, doing the brick pattern, it was quite quite a lot of work, but and it still didn't look like organic like this. Um, so I'm excited about sort of revisiting those sort of architectural models, but using this to apply like a stone or a brick um, pattern that, that looks, um, you know, a lot more realistic. All right, I'm just gonna leave it here. I wanted to show the basics just to, you know, kick the tires a bit and see what the potential is for this tool. I'm, I'm excited for what I see here. I think this is going to open up a lot of creative opportunities here and just uh, different avenues to pursue in terms of adding textures to our models. So let me know what you think. If you have any questions, uh, leave it in the comments. Or if you just uh, think this is gonna be a useful feature for you, uh, let me know your thoughts on it um, in the comments below. And uh, stay tuned for more videos where I'm definitely gonna explore this, maybe just limit myself to this one feature and see you know what I can make from it. All right, if you're looking to level up your fusion design skills, check out my links below to my online courses and my weekly live Zoom class. All right, guys, I will see you in the next one.